Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tuesday, the 15th of November, Bull versus Bear webinar for Trade Day. Steve Miley on the call. Welcome, everyone. We're going to go through our usual regular run through calendar, what we've had, what we've got coming up, macroeconomic and fundamental geopolitical events from the major news wires, charts, where are the trigger points, support resistance, and where's the directional bias going into today. So, uh, calendar first of all, uh, UK employment report in there this morning, slightly mixed, um, unemployment rate slightly worse than anticipated, the employment change number, which is the equivalent like the NFP number in here, slightly worse than expected. Um, average earnings, actually that's worse really because you think that's going to be inflationary, so that was slightly above and the claimant count um, is slightly higher, uh, better than expected. So kind of, if anything, you'd have to say uh, more negative for inflationary pressures and more um, negative for a slowdown in the economy. But only marginal here in a lot of these numbers, so not huge, uh, hugely outside of consensus. We also got the German ZEW survey. This is an economic sentiment survey, uh, very much looked at in Europe. Obviously, Germany, the powerhouse, economic powerhouse of Europe. And you can see beating expectations in here. Um, so that's a positive as well um, for uh, European um, data. Uh, GDP out of the Eurozone as a whole came in bang in line with expectations. Looking ahead into the day, yes, we get PPI data. Yes, it is an inflation number. No, it doesn't really impact markets very much at all. It's going to have to be very much out of line from the US. We have that now in just under one hour. And then although they're not actually on here, um, we do get a slew of... Um, of uh, Fed speakers today. So we'll come to that um, as we go through five things to start your day. They've got those in here. So let's talk about those now. So we do get today um, Harker and Cook at 9 a.m. Eastern, an hour later, Bar. And yeah, that's it. So we've got those coming up um, later today. That's going to be the main focus, the Fed speakers, particularly as we go to the second point in here. So Brainard uh, on the tapes um, over the last 12, 24 hours, um, indicating that they would soon moderate the size of, of interest rate hikes in here. Um, so there we go. Brainard says Fed should probably soon slow pace of rate hikes. We've done a lot, but we have additional work to do. So echoing what we've heard previously, OK, remember um, Brainard, the vice chair, um, echoing what we've heard from other Fed members, echoing what we basically heard from um, Powell at the last meeting uh, at the press conference and from the statement. Statement saying, yes, we are probably going to slow down. Yeah. But two, we've still got more to go. So we're still going to go and hit the peak, at least where the market is thinking. And that's being echoed and reflected. We've been looking at the Fed tool in here. Um, it's sitting still up at 80% in here, the Fed tool. So um, and no surprises there, you know, for the next meeting. And we've been looking at this regularly. The peak in rates now lower than it previously was, right? So the peak in rates was, and if we go out to the middle of next year, was at 500, 525. Now it's indicating 475, uh, 500. And then by November next year, in a year's time, you see the peak was 475, 500. And now we're at 450, 475 going into November. So looking for potentially a rate cut going into the uh, in a year's time. So that's what the curve is pricing in. Um, we also had some positives in here, a uh, meeting between um, uh, President Xi, Xi Jinping of China and President U of the US, Joe Biden. Uh, that seems a positive, nothing really coming out from that. But nevertheless, they're speaking. So um, that was seen as certainly a positive. And it's really been helping. Chinese stocks have been um, helped by, you know, rumors and, and slightly loosening of co the zero COVID policy. Um, there's been um, a, an extra boost uh, more recently from changes in policy regarding the housing market to boost the flagging housing market in China. And then we've also got this, you know, thawing maybe of uh, the relations between the US and China, um, which is certainly seeing a seen as a positive. So all those things buoying and pushing Chinese stocks higher in here. And you actually look at the Hang Seng now. The Hang Seng is arguably... 
Hang Seng, which is reflective of the Chinese stock market, the Hong Kong index in here is arguably in a bull market. Um, and we've got there's a little article on that um, I'll come to shortly. Um, so, yeah, so they've met Brain Arbor. We spoke that Buffett in buying semiconductor Taiwanese semi um, Conductor manufacturing, um, Lowe's world's leading chip maker, exclusive supplier to Apple, um, has taken a five billion dollar stake in those. So um, we are seeing money coming to work into the market, um, and from the Sage of Omaha, Warren Buffett, um, equity futures slightly up in here. So let's just run through brain up. We've already spoken about in here. Uh, big tech stokes nasdaq as yields dip on fed up so yeah so brainard um the comments of brainard pushing yields in here uh lower if we go and take a look at the cut the uh, us 10 year in here where's the interactive chart go and look at what we've seen at our price action over the last 12 to 24 hours post those brainard comments and you'll see in here, look, so there's the big move we had lower um, back on Thursday after the CPI data, a double top on yields. Remember, we spoke about this, not only taking out that support there, or sorry, resistance, actually resistance, because um, it's, uh, it's the yield chart. And so with respect to price, that's actually a resistance level one regarding really price, um, because this going down is actually bond prices going up. And then also taking out that point there. And look, we're back at where we got to back on Thursday after that announcement. Remember, the bond market was closed on Friday due to the um, Veterans Day holiday. Um, so the market in here, I'm um, pushing back down to Thursday's um, yield lows in here this overnight. And obviously that's more beneficial, lower yields, more beneficial to um, the NASDAQ, to growth stocks, okay? Growth stocks benefiting from lower yields. Um, and really this double top pattern in here on yields, pushing, aiming the market down, at least back down to this level in here. So that's just above 350, 356 potentially even lower if you do the measure on this in here it's going to take us down to here and then down through there we could be acting down into like the 320s that'd be a whole um, um percent lower than from the peak so you know we could be aiming down into here that will be a significant easing of negative pressures on the equity market uh if we move to substantially lower yields right let's go back to where we were so yeah so big tech stokes nasdaq uh, yields um debt on in u.s china relations tower with the chip makers so and we spoke about you know um it's positive obviously <laughs> The chip makers and Warren Buffett's been buying that as well. So there we go. Um, Investco manager worries overblown markets could provoke Fed. So yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, so yeah, markets are looking uh, bullish. And here, look, bull markets are back in surprise turnover stock investors. Hang Seng is in a bull market. German's DAX, Germany's DAX is on the cusp of a bull market. So markets in here um, certainly looking um, uh, very positive in here overall at the moment. Um, what else do we have? RBA, so the Reserve Bank of um, Australia, not something we necessarily focus on, but that has had an impact in the past. If you remember when they, um, what they, they cut not as much as anticipated, you know, um, some months ago. Um, but in here, the Australian Central Bank in their minutes. Um, so they're both indicated. So in their last um, uh, rate cut in here, um, so they uh, they weighed up two options and they uh, raised rates by only a quarter percent. OK, but they were looking at either 25 or 50. But if in the minutes it says that they were looking at 25 or 50, but they're also prepared to pause. OK, so you know, that's opening the door to a more dovish tone. The arguments for 25 basis point increase rested largely on the fact that the cash rate had been increased materially in a short period of time. And there are, were lags. So, yeah, so th there's a potential even for a, a pause when they're not on a preset path. OK, so, um, you know, it, you know, one central bank and it's not the biggest central bank in the world and it's not the biggest economy in the world. But nevertheless, one significant central bank um, um, is thinking about is look, is toying with the idea of pausing the rate hiking cycle. So that's significant. And remember, the Australian economy, very reactive to the Asian and Chinese economy and the global economy. So, you know, this is on the, the back of, you know, the um, the Chinese economy looking more buoyant. It's positive for the Australian economy and maybe they don't need to be hiking as aggressively. So they're thinking of pausing. So this is maybe a little bit of a heads up and it's something we can trade on today. It's not for day traders, you know, and we that's what we are here at Trader. But nevertheless, it's something to bear in mind. Um, one of the global world's global major global central banks is toying with going into pause. And it, that was in their minutes. OK. What else we have in here? Uh, stocks lifted by a Fed pivot hopes China debt on market. Yes, I mean same as we've just we've already mentioned all of that. That might be might be looked at one already. Everything is suddenly going right for China's stock market. Property and COVID easing uh, reduces tension with U.S. boost mood. Okay, Hang Seng China gauge enter bull market on Monday. 
threats and, and the HSI today. So yeah, so the markets in here are looking very buoyant um, on the China side, you know, helped by, you know, three things really. Uh, we've got the property boost, um, we've got the potential COVID easing and the reduced tensions with the US all pushing the markets higher. As I say, Hang Seng hitting a bull market and the HSI hitting a bull market this week. So all very bullish coming out of Asia. Um, futures rise on US China talks inflation's data in focus. PPI, do we care? No. Um, here we are. Um, I need to open this one up to look at, look at the European indices, but you can see in here fairly unchanged in here today. We do have the uh, DAX is pretty much unchanged. The FTSE pretty much unchanged. The CAC, the French index up four temps. So slightly better in here in Europe this morning. And if we go take a look at the US indices, uh, we had that slight dip yesterday, uh, uh, six tenths from the Dow, NASDAQ was about a percent, I think, as I remember. It's not showing on here, never does. And then nine tenths on the S&P. But we've got back at least that, you know, pretty much today. So uh, S&P's turned that around. NASDAQ over a percent higher overnight on the lower yields, on the China boost. OK, um, and lower yields being driven by Brainard in here. So if we go take a look at the charts, here's the NASDAQ leading the way. We talk about the growth stocks, right? Up above, not only... Um, the follow through high on Friday, we had an indecisive doji session yesterday that could have easily turned into something more negative, rejecting that boom, new high this morning. Nothing really on the top side until all the way up here. Um, that's the next big significant level. That's up through 12,000 up to 12,140. That's going to be potential target today, even as high as up to into here, 12, like 12,200, 12,250, potentially even up there today. It's going to get a real boost in here from um from all of the everything we've had overnight and you can see here just in the last 15 minutes making a new high in here really gradual steady climb in here overnight we haven't had any kind of impulsive move yet we could easily get an impulsive move as we go forward um the s p not quite back up to the peaks we saw from friday and yesterday but rejecting yesterday's little setback failure and back up near the highs. There's nothing really of real note in here on the S&P until that peak there on the chart. But look at this trend line. That's going to be important. That trend line is coming right off the very high. OK, it may not be the best trend line in the world. OK, but that trend line drawn off the very high from the very end of last year through the peak there from um, August. OK, that is up in the I don't think we're going to get there today. Don't believe me. I don't think we're going to get there today around the 4150 area and it's just below that peak there that peak there's at 4175 but we could easily get up towards there going into today you know i wouldn't be surprised to see an impulsive move we had a pause session yesterday we've got nothing to stop us going higher got no real data coming through in here today um we could easily see a fly higher in the, and a more impulsive move today i do think we'll get a more impulsive move today slash tomorrow um from the equity markets it's just whether it comes today or tomorrow i do think though we've got another one of these because that's a massive we've got kind of a flag you know a flag pole there and, a, and then the market's flag and we go and look at the 15 minute chart there you go look, flag pole flag pattern boom okay and it's the same obviously on the nasdaq boom flag and then we're breaking out already on the nasdaq in here there's the flag flying and the market already breaking out whether you know pennant whatever you want to call it but nevertheless it's certainly signaling more upside let's go take a look at gold and oil massive down day for oil yesterday big down day and then this morning undercut the low from last week looks more negative in here i think the real risk is to see these shoulders in here we previously laid it from the head and shoulders it's kind of a foul head and shoulders pattern hasn't worked out i wouldn't be surprised to see us put down towards um, like 81, 82, 81 and a half kind of area going into today. OK, and if we go and step into the 15 minute chart, you know, big set off yesterday. Another set off this morning, took out this low, has had a rebound in here, but you can see fouled below these peaks in here. So they're around the 85, 70, 80 kind of area failing down from there. I think this is a really good opportunity. This rebound is a good opportunity to sell into um, oil in here. And remember, lower oil is going to help as well. Um, the stock indices higher if we get lower oil, um, less inflationary pressures. Let's take a look at gold. Continues its climb higher, um, dip and a rebound yesterday, nudging even higher in here this morning. We've taken out this peak over here. The market was just below, well, I think we're just below there previously, 1778.8. Uh, um, where were we high? I don't think we quite made the air right. 1775.5, yesterday 1778.4, and then this morning through there up to 1787.2. Um, that peak there was. So, oh no, 1778.8. So we're not, no, we are through that peak. Sorry, I'm reading the wrong um, 
that's not high 1787.2 um, and this peak over here was uh 1778.8 70 you were about 87.2 but we went through there yesterday um and then we're through there this morning so we've taken out an important level there um on gold already this morning um and we've had a little setback in here if we go into the 15 minute chart though you know it's a minor setback and again this has got look at what we had before do you remember these these kind of flag patterns in here right so again, look, flagpole, flag, flagpole, flag, flagpole. And it's been a grind higher. It wouldn't be surprised for me to see another impulsive. This is setting up for another impulsive move higher like the stocks are, you know, and obviously these at the moment are positively correlated. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the same kind of impulsive move. I think in the next 48 hours, if it's today or not, I don't know, right? You know, if I had a crystal ball, great. But I mean, I don't. But I mean, it feels to me we had a pause yesterday. It was kind of a pause that we had on, on Friday as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see markets motoring to the top side impulsively into today. Right. That's just my opinion, though. You work it out for yourselves. But that's where I'm sat. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. I wish you all a great trading day. Stay safe. Take care. And I'll be back with you with another Bull versus Bear webinar tomorrow on Wednesday.